There was once upon a time a fisherman who lived with his wife close by the sea in a pigsty. And every day the fisherman went out fishing. He fished, he fished, and he fished. <laughs> and once he was sitting with his rod looking at the clear water. And he sat and he sat and he sat. And he sat. And suddenly, an ugly looking, squashy sort of fish appeared out of the water, wiggled around a bit, and was caught on the end of his line. Uh, listen, uh, fisherman, <laughs> please let me live. I'm no squash looking fish, really, but an enchanted prince. <laughs> what good would it do to kill me? <laughs> I taste revolting. Please, put me in the sea again. Oh! Well, there's no need for so much chatter about it. <laughs> I wish to have nothing to do with a fish that can talk, so swim away as soon as you please, man. I mean, fish. <laughs> and he put the fish straight back in the clear water, and it swam down gratefully to the bottom of the sea, leaving a long streak of blood behind it. Then the fisherman went home to his wife in the pigsty. So, husband, she said, I suppose you've caught nothing again today? Uh, no, said the fisherman. Oh, well, I did catch a fish who said he was an enchanted prince, so I, I let him go again. <laughs> What? said his wife. Did you not wish for anything first? No. What, what should I wish for? Well, surely it's very hard to live in this pigsty, which stinks and is so disgusting. He might have asked for a little house for us. Go back and tell him he wants a little house. He owes us that much. Go at once. Ooh. Well, the man didn't really like to go and ask for a little house, but he didn't like to argue with his wife either, so he went to the sea. When he got there, the water was all blue and purple and no longer so smooth. The fish came swimming up to him and said, Well, <laughs> what do you want? Ah, uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, <laughs> said the fisherman awkwardly. You see, I did let you go, and, 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 and my wife says I really should have wished for something, you know. She doesn't like living in the pigsty anymore. <laughs> she says she'd quite like to live in a little house. Go home, said the fish. She already has a little house. And when the fisherman went home, his wife was no longer in a pigsty, but sitting on a bench beside a nice little house. Oh, come inside, husband, she said, almost smiling. Look at my house. Oh, it's lovely, lovely, lovely. So they went in, and there were pretty little curtains, and two bedrooms, and a kitchen, and nice furniture, and beautiful things made of tin and brass, and everything that could be needed. And behind the house was a small yard with ducks and chickens and a little garden with flowers and fruits. And look, husband, oh, life will be much happier for us now. Oh, oh yes, wife. Now we'll live happily forever and ever. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see about that, said the wife. And with that, they ate something and uh, went to bed. Everything went well for a week or so. And then the wife said, listen, <clears throat> husband, you know, this little house is far too small, and the garden's so small, it's almost invisible. That fish might have given us a proper size house. In fact, I should like a large stone castle to live in. Yeah. So go to the fish again and tell him to give us a stone castle. Oh, wife, said the fisherman, I, I would like to go back to him so soon. He might make him angry. Go, said the wife. He can do it quite easily, and he'll be glad to do it. Just go to him quick. And the fisherman said to himself, oh, it's not quite ow, it's not quite right. Oh, ow, it's not quite right. Oh. But he went anyway he was too cowardly to refuse his wife's commands. When he came to the sea, the water was purple and grey. The wind howled over it, and the waves rolled up and down. Well, said the fish, what does she want now? Oh, alas, Mr. Fish, sir, my wife, she wants to live in a big, big stone castle. <laughs> well, go home then. <laughs> She's standing in the door of it already. And there she was, in her castle, tickling herself with a beautiful purple fan. There were enormously high swing doors, which were opened by servants who flew in specially for the occasion. They marched up and down through marble hallways, which were lined with golden statues of the fish. Orange trees had been grown, just so she could nibble at them all day. All the servants had to bow every time they saw her. And there were parties every night of the week. Everyone had to get up incredibly early just to catch the wild boar in order to throw him out before the guests arrived. Oh, 
don't put me down, I want to stay, I want to talk about railway timetables. So, said the fisherman, oh, we'll live in this stone castle and be happy for the rest of our lives, won't we? Well, we'll see about that, husband. Come on, let's sleep on it. And that night the fisherman slept soundly because he'd run about a great deal during the day. But the wife, she was tossing and turning and turning and tossing all night long, worrying and fretting about what she could have that was more exciting than a stone castle. Ah, two stone castles. No. A stone castle made of chocolate. No, 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 no. All the servants would nibble away at it. Whatever she had, she wanted all for herself. She got so upset she fell out of bed and crushed four servants that were waiting at her bedside to do her bidding. So she whipped them thoroughly for being so inconsiderate and spent the rest of the night marching around the room, shouting at her other servants and giving them all orders until they were all quite deaf. But by the next morning, the wife had decided what she wanted. Instead of just an old castle, she wanted to be king as well. Yeah, she wanted to tell everyone what to do, not just her husband. And instead of a stone castle, she wanted a magnificent king's palace with more servants, more rooms, more gold, more rabbits in the garden, more everything for me! Oh, it's not right. It's not right, said the fisherman. But unhappy as he was about it, he went back to the sea. The sea was dark, dark grey. When a high wind blew, the man felt faint. He shivered and shook him. And his knees trembled and his teeth went... Uh, the water rose and roared as if it was boiling and then crashed down on the shore. And in the distance, he saw ships pitching and tossing on the waves. The fisherman was almost more frightened to ask the fish than he was of his wife. But not quite. He was very surprised when the fish said, Go home. Your wife is king already. Sure enough. She was sitting on a diamond throne, looking more likely to be a king than anything else. Oh, wife, the fisherman asked, are you king now? Yes, now I am the king. <laughs> and uh, now you're the king, you'll leave well alone, won't you? You'll be content. <laughs> you can't possibly wish for more, can you? <laughs> can you? Well, husband, we will see. Now don't disturb me anymore. I have to tell everybody what to do. Go away. So. He went away and kept quiet and enjoyed the splendour of her court, with soldiers blowing trumpets and beating cymbals, lords and dukes going about as servants, and guards who stood in two rows beside his wife's throne, each one smaller than the next, from the biggest giant, two miles high, to the very smallest dwarf who was just as big as my little finger. The wife woke up first the next day because the sun was rising. He was streaming through the window and getting in her eyes. <laughs> How nice it would be, she said to herself, if I could tell the sun not to rise so early and shine in my eyes. And, and I could tell the stars when to shine. And the moon, when it could be full and pink. Yeah! Well, her husband was still snoring and eh, eh, scratching himself, so she poked him in the ribs with her elbow. Get up, husband! What's the use of being king if I can't tell the stars and the moon what to do? What point is there being king if the sun gets up without me telling it to? But, but, but then would, you would be ruler of the entire universe. Exactly. I wish to be ruler of the entire universe. Yeah, that'll do for me. And make sure there's no bits left out. Oh, no, wife, said the fisherman. No, 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 that's too much. The fish will be tired out. No one can ask for that much. Then she fell into a rage and her hair flew wildly around her head and she tore off her clothes and she kicked him with her foot and screamed, I can't stand it. I can't stand it any longer. Go this instant. <laughs> So the fisherman put on his trousers and ran away like a madman. But outside, a great storm was raging and blowing so hard he could scarcely keep on his feet. Houses and trees toppled over. The mountains trembled. Rocks rolled into the sea. The sky was pitch black. The water heaved up from the seabed, smelling beautiful and sickening. There was thunder and lightning. The sea came in with black waves as high as church towers and smashed the ships below. The fisherman cried out, but he could not hear his own words. Well, what does she want now? She wants to be ruler of the entire universe! I beg your pardon? She wants to be ruler of the entire universe! Go to her then, the fish replied, and you'll find her back in the pigsty. And they are still living there to this day. 
It's not my fault. 